tout à l'heure, nous arrivons au terme de cette journée et il est temps de prendre un petit peu de recul et de se tourner vers d'autres horizons. Nous avons commencé la journée avec euh, Marc euh, Shuttleworth, un homme au goût prononcé pour l'exploration de, de nouveaux territoires. Et nous l'avons vu, l'open source est incontournable. Ça fait un jour et demi, presque deux jours que nous en parlons dans les sociétés développées. Et il est venu le moment de se poser la question de savoir ce qu'il se passe dans les, dans les régions émergentes du monde. Et c'est pour cette raison que j'ai le plaisir d'inviter euh, le professeur à l'Université fédérale du Brésil, qui est Christi, Christiana Freitas, et qui va nous emmener vers le Brésil, l'Afrique du Sud et l'Inde, pour y découvrir les applications qui sont faites de l'open source. Bienvenue It's a pleasure to be here again once more. Uh, this year we had a different uh, kind of meeting. Uh, last year we had a BRICS summit and this year we had a IPSA. And it was really, really interesting. Um, we had uh, representatives from all of the three countries. Uh, I, I tend to look there to see the, the slides. That's a, a class uh, vicious. <laughs> so it was me, uh, I'm a professor from the University of Brasilia, and I'm also representing the Ministry of Planning from Brazil. Uh, Jarbas Cardoso, which is professor at the IT Research Center in Campinas, Brazil. Uh, Fernando Canto and José Luis Machado, which are developers and system analysts. Uh, from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, which is a state in the south of Brazil. Tuli Hadeb and Pierre Schonhad, I hope I'm saying the surnames right, <laughs> uh, from South Africa. They are from the Center for Public Service Innovation. And we had Mr. Gurumurthy from NGO uh, from India, uh, talking about public service and public uh, software with us from the internet because he couldn't get his visa on time. So uh, he uh, sent us a lot of interesting contributions. So the main questions that we uh, tried to answer in the summit, which was yesterday, the whole day, was uh, first, what are, what's our common vision of the future? Do we have a common vision? How can we use FLOSS for our country's development? And when I was thinking, why would you be interested in our vision of the future? And then I thought that the, the idea that I'm, I'm bringing to you today about the internationalization of public software can be interesting not only to India, Brazil, and South Africa, but to all of the countries, because uh, it, the idea is a public software as a public good and I will talk about it uh, later on. So what can we do to intensify efforts in internationalizing the best practices and initiatives in the three countries, and which paths and agenda shall we choose to follow? So I will be brief, I won't uh, tell everything that we discussed uh, yesterday, but uh, mainly South Africa started with their uh, FOSS policy since uh, 2006, and the idea is that the government uh, from then will encourage the use of open content and open standards within South Africa. So uh, after 2006, they have a lot of things to share, a lot of initiatives that are interesting, and we discussed it uh, yesterday. India also have uh, a lot of initiatives, a lot of uh, new things going on, and one of them is the concept of public software similar to what we have in Brazil. So it, it was really interesting because we not only have a common vision of the future, but we also have a common vision of the present. So what are we doing now and how can we uh, do better? So. In India, uh, Mr. Gurumurthy uh, underlined that there is a legal rule to use open source in government agencies. So everybody needs to use, uh, it's mandatory. In Brazil, we don't have it, uh, it's not such an obligation, but we have an indication to do that. So um, I will speak a little more about that uh, later on, that uh, 
what we think about uh, public software and public policies related to flaws is that uh, the state, uh, our experience show us that um, the state can be an actor that intermediates, uh, can be a, a, a supporting actor in all of the changes and all of the process, but it doesn't have to be the main actor in all of the public policies and all of the, tent, uh, the attempts to implement uh, free software. So, uh, both uh, the three countries uh, found a lot of barriers that are common that we could, that we shared and we discussed and talked about. One of them is the need to improve skills. We need to have uh, courses and capacity building for IT skills in all of our population. We are talking about three large countries and complex countries where we have cities that are really developed and cities that are really underdeveloped. Uh, we have more than 5,000 municipalities. So uh, how to put this all together is really uh, complicated. So we have a lack of integrated effort. We have projects that uh, begin now and then uh, late one or two years later, it begin again. <laughs> you have uh, like a, a lack of uh, cohesion of all the projects and that is, really needs to be corrected. So uh, the need to focus on citizens' experiences and demands are one of the uh, most important aspects, I think. Citizens building their environment with open technologies. Uh, and I will give an example here. What does that mean? Uh, I don't see, um, when we think of uh, public software and when we think of floss in general, uh, I think the idea is not to uh, think of public policies like something that's top-down, mandatory, or you have to do it. But I think that when we start from the citizens, and then we will have a better society, a society that is different. Uh, from the moment that we have a citizen that perceive that change is necessary. So one example of our service relations, and um, we think of IT for services, uh, mainly, especially uh, open source. We have an accountant in a very small city in Minas Gerais, which is a state in the center south of Brazil, and he decided to install the public software that we call eCity, which is a public software for uh, management of municipalities' accounts and staff, administrative things, and it is really a software that uh, has been implemented in all cities in Brazil, and this person, this accountant in the city hall of this city decided to uh, learn how to use it, um, solve all the problems that appeared to uh, when he tried to use it, and then he uh, tried to uh, ask for help of a program developer in the city so that he could uh, both uh, work together to install this eCity. So, one of uh, the examples that we can uh, take from that is that Juramento, the city, used to pay a mensal license of $3,500, and now they pay only $120 to where the software is hosted. Uh, one of the 100 advantages that we can think of is that data is in cloud computing, so you don't need to be in the office when you need some data. Uh, and the next step that Luciano, this accountant, is trying to um, achieve is transforming the software in something for smartphones. So as you can see, it's not something that was uh, mandatory from the government, but the individual, it's, uh, he, was try he is trying to transform, to change his reality because he thinks it's important, because he thinks that he found a way to do that. So, that's why I say, that's why I said that I think it's important that you have the state as a, a, a important player, but not uh, the main player or the, the most important one that will really um, make people do things as an obligation. So just to have a, a quick, um, overview of what happens in the portal. Today we have uh, more than 50 public software in the portal and more than 100,000 users. 
Uh, we have some uh, service providers registered, 249 business companies, and 275 individuals registered as service providers. So it's a business model with focus on content produced by the users. So that's the, the information I just told you. And why do we think of this initiative, of the initiative of the public software, as a possibility of internationalization? First, because it creates job opportunities, it promotes income increase, it promotes social and digital inclusion. That's, I just gave one of the hundreds of examples that we can think of. And it also strengthens the state. So uh, it is interesting, not for, just for India, Brazil, and South Africa, but it's interesting for all nations that uh, think of software as a public good. So what have we done so far in this process? Uh, in 2008, we started uh, to negotiate with the United Nations, and we entered in the Collaborative Network for Free and Open Source Software in Latin America and the Caribbean with the Federal University of Minas Gerais, that same state that I told you before in the center south of Brazil. So, with this process, we started to replicate in Latin America and the Caribbean the best practices and the best public software in the portal. So in 2009, a survey was developed to ask the community in general which software would be interesting to translate to, uh, first to uh, Spanish and then to English. And then we had the Cacique, which is the first public software uh, that started the portal. Today we have more than 20,000 members in this, um, in this community. And the Educar, which is a software uh, specialized in managing educational issues uh, for administrative staff, uh, to control grades, to control presence, frequency of staff, frequency of students, etc. So, uh, last year, seven countries agreed to contribute and to adequate their models of public software to, to the Brazilian one. And this year, Argentina decided to institutionalize the experience of public software, publishing a legal resolution too. So, what we um, plan to do uh, from yesterday on was that uh, we want to expand this network to India and South Africa too. So we were thinking of which public software would be interesting to translate to English and then South Africa could use it and India as well and any other countries that may be interested in. So we thought of ba five basic public software which is this one for education sector that I've just told about. The ECD, that's the one that the accountant from the small city used for management of municipalities issues. A middleware that we have for digital TV, which uh, South Africa was particularly interested in. Uh, Invesalius, which is an important tool for the health sector. It, um, it's a tool that is used already in Canada and in Japan. Or you can see that uh, some of the softwares are already being internationalized without a government initiative. So uh, what we think it's important is to uh, make it available, show and disseminate the idea and the concept so we can use it in better ways and in more countries than we, use, than we are using now. And Saeli was, is the open electronic election system that has just joined the portal. We had uh, the developer yesterday here talking about it for us. It was developed, uh, it started uh, the data processing in 2004. Maybe he can help me uh, here with the details. And it was inspired by the Brazilian electronic ballot, which is, uh, we use it since 96. It aimed to attend the need for a fast, efficient, secure, and neutral process of election. So, the first elections uh, were ran in 2005. Over 200 elections successfully completed so far. So, its, uh, it, its conversion to free software started in 2009. Intellectual property officially registered in this year, submitted to the public software portal this year too to be released to other Brazilian institutions. So the idea is to disseminate the concept, disseminate the idea, thinking of public software as a public good. Uh, 
as you have electricity and water, uh, like social rights, you can have IT skills, you can have free software, open source codes uh, as a right for the population. So it can increase social inclusion, so it can increase digital inclusion. And the, I think the, the most uh, difficult uh, answer in all this process is how do we guarantee the sustainability of the initiative? How can we make it last? How can we make it a state policy that can last and can overcome all the government changes that we have a lot? So uh, one of the answers I think is can, we can reward creativity like I think the forum does for, uh, since its beginning and it's really interesting. We can uh, stimulate people that develop people that create things, that new things that like the electronic system that I just uh, told you about. Uh, we need systems of intellectual property that values innovation and stimulates openness. And in this sense, we are trying, we are now in the beginning of the discussions of a public trademark license that will be a bit more permissive than, than what we uh, regularly know as registration marks. Uh, we need a high level of control over the quality of each public software and its improvement. Uh, we especially need to know who offers what and who demands it. So if we have this control in the portal, it, it's interesting to uh, manage it in, in a more uh, in-depth way. The state is the intermediate actor between who offers and who demands public software. He is not uh, the one that's going to tell everybody and everyone what to do. And this is a tendency in public policies in Brazil as a whole. We see that, uh, we see that a lot of interesting public policies start with the population in the community, and then it starts with a lot of partnerships, and afterwards, uh, the government in some way represents a role in the whole process, but it's not uh, the major actor in the process. So, uh, we think that public software is strategical to government and to society, and this justifies cooperation initiatives in the sense of sharing knowledge, technology, and publicizing public software. Uh, the future perspective, uh, what we want to do and that we uh, start to discuss yesterday and that we will uh, do from now on, is have discussions like two or th from two and three e months, always, uh, continuously, so we can discuss uh, the whole, th all, the, all that we have to offer and all that India has to offer and all that South Africa has to offer and how can we manage to create a strategic plan so we can help each other in the process of social, economic and political development. So the idea is to make the concept and, and the initiatives of public software a state public policy, not only a government initiative, and institutionalize and disseminate the idea. Uh, just to conclude, I think that uh, democracy today is something that we have to think of, including digital inclusion, and social inclusion is not possible without this uh, without the, the material apparatus that we have to have, without the, the IT skills that we have to teach people how to do, how to deal with the machine. And this is a very important element, uh, not only for India, Brazil, and South Africa, but I think for the whole world. Uh, we can't go on with this digital divide that it's so, um, so clear and so strong. And it's not in terms of countries. We have this in, in all the nations. If you see United States, you have a very great digital divide inside the country. So knowledge fosters democracy and consolidates the power of a nation, especially open knowledge based on commons. Uh, I would like to finish with this uh, sentence that I think it's interesting from our Minister of Defense, that was our Minister of International Relations last year. The international division of power among nations is conditioned by the international division of knowledge. So what we are trying to do with our project is to disseminate knowledge, disseminate open source code, disseminate open knowledge 
so we can have a democracy, a stronger democracy, and more social, political, and economic development. So thank you very much.